Hey guys, it's Jaden here from Couch in the Mind, clearing the mind one couch talk at a time. And on today's episode, episode seven, I can't believe we're actually at episode seven already. It's insane how time flies, man. Hopefully you guys are getting something out of this. And well, myself and Michael personally, we're getting a lot. So really appreciate all the positive feedback as well. But the, the uh, topic we're going over today is um, don't judge a book by its cover. And by that I mean, you might see someone down and you're quick to judge and, and quick to give them a hard time, but you don't really know what they're going through personally. So what I'm trying to say is reach out to those that need a hand and, and just don't judge a book by its cover and, you know, and maybe investigate um, and find a reasoning as to why they're like that. So anyway, this particular topic today, I've got um, a special guest in with me, um, Sam Chapman. Thanks, man. Good to see you, brother. Good to see you too, man. Long time to see you. Yeah, bro. Yeah, it has been, eh? Um, Sam Chapman actually went to Villanova College in there as well. And um, yeah, man, I haven't seen you in about, what, four or five years? Any bag, yeah. When? 2016. Yeah, four years. Almost five years. Yeah. Yeah, but... um, you old. Yeah, no, it's really good to see you, bro. And I'm really glad you want to be on the show, man. Yeah, yeah definitely, means a man. lot, dude. So um, today, yeah, Sam's going to help me uh, talk about the topic of don't judge a book by its cover. So um, as I say in all, all of the previous episodes, and Mike says as well, um, discretion warning, what you may hear today might be quite confronting. Sam has spoken to me, and he said that um, specific scenarios that he'd been faced with in the past, whether it be with someone in particular or a collective group of people, he um, has had approval um, of those particular people that he's going to be mentioning today. So um, please don't be offended. If you feel offended, um, um, pause those particular parts or um, if you want to continue to watch, then continue to do so. Anyways, I'm going to hand the mic over to Sam so he can share his story of don't ju judge a book by its cover and um, I'll ask him questions along the way. Awesome, man. Whenever you're ready, man. Alrighty. Um, well, I guess the best place to start would be uh, around towards the back end of high school. Yep. Obviously, uh, it's a bit of a rough time for everyone mm. in high school, obviously Obviously. dealing with multiple pressures at uh, once, where you're going to be after high school finishes, yep. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I struggled quite a bit in high school, if you can remember, uh, but yeah, I struggled quite a bit with obviously, I just wanted to fit in, when it's now thinking back was probably not the best, mm. the way things to go about things. Uh, I just wanted to, yeah, I, I wanted to feel welcome, yep. but obviously a lot of the things that were happening behind closed doors in my life anyway, particularly based around family sort of matters. Do you, had, do you mind me asking why you didn't feel like you were um, fitting in with the uh, Villanova community? Well, I just, I felt really isolated. I yep. didn't know how to talk to anyone about the sort of things that I was experiencing at home. Yep. And I guess that sort of carried over into how I acted. Sure. And that, in a lot of a sense, it was in a very negative sort of way. But I guess thinking back now, yeah, the way things sort of carried over, I would struggle to even go home sometimes after school because every single time I would go home, there would be some sort of disagreement, large fight scale going on. Yep. And it would make me quite, uh, well, frightened, uh, unwelcome. And just uneasy it wasn't really a like a nice sort of environment to do anything in mm. and i think i never actually really wanted to be there yep. toward the end of and like end of my schooling anyway so you struggle to find maybe a safe space you're saying, definitely so you what you're saying is because because i mean for a lot of people they're like oh so keen for school to be over mm. But for your instance, you're saying that even though you're having a difficult time at school, going back at home and trying to exert some of the negative energy or try to forget some of the things that have happened throughout the day and, and try and enjoy your time at home, you couldn't really do that essentially. No, not really. Yep. There was always some sort of disagreement happening uh, with uh, like members in my family, obviously. I won't go too heavily into detail. Yep. No, but... that's all right. I respect that. Um, yeah, there was there was quite a lot of times where there was domestic violence evident and like I would get home to, for example, my father and my brother having like a physical disagreement and mm -hmm. I would have to get in between them, the sort of thing that... Yeah, it just, something, something that, you know, I mean, no one should be going through that stuff, but especially a school kid. Yeah, you know? 
it's it, you enough problems as it is, man. Yeah, I was already like drowning in stress, and then like that's where the thing would happen, and I, I think it came close to the point where I almost had like a nervous breakdown. It was ridiculous, but I think after school finished was probably when the roughest periods started to happen. Yep. I, uh, yeah, I. Sorry, I'm just a little bit shell shocked. Uh, no, 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 mate. Like, take your time. Bro. Um, it's all good. Yeah, just after I finished school, I had like a, just like a cascade of, not necessarily bad things, but confronting things happened to me. Yep. And they kind of took me off guard, and I was in a really dark place for a long time. And yep. yeah, but essentially, after school, well, during schoolies, while I was down there, just after everything, obviously, I actually had a friend that. Uh, committed suicide and it wasn't a very pleasant time mm. I couldn't couldn't handle the guilt all I felt was what do you so what I mean like I said bro like if if you don't want me to delve into it well yeah. I'm just gonna ask the question and if you feel com- not comfortable answering it like no no harm man but why do you feel like there was a guilt toward the situation that you're being faced with I felt like I was being selfish. I didn't do enough for him. Enough, like I didn't feel like I did enough to maybe try and keep him from doing what he did. Doing yeah. what he did, and I guess obviously there's always going to be time. Like if a person decides that they that's what they're going to do, it's hard to, to ever talk them out of it. Yes, and that's. That's the ultimate thing that I tell myself all yep. the time, and I wish that like I could have done something more in the end, but in the end I couldn't, and that had a profound effect on me mm. for the coming months and years. But after that, it sort of I guess it compounded as well. Mm. Uh, things at home started getting a lot worse. Yep. Um, so fast forward to now. Yeah. How did you actually break the cycle and and change your your mood and mindset? I was extremely lucky to come across a few people that I view as mentors. Yep. And they put me on a correct sort of, obviously I became sort of quite heavily uh, involved in exercise and going to the gym and- Man, you can tell brother, doing it right. (laughs) Thanks man. Uh, Trying to do that, yeah, just trying to look after myself a little bit better and try and, and I also started, I guess I also started reading into the effects of exercise on the hippocampus, so the area of your brain that yep. deals with memories. Yep. So exercise can actually positively affect that and yes. help you positively, I guess, view view memories in a different perspective. I and guess. I can I can actually relate to that because when I when I had my electric shock at work, mm. I had quite bad PTSD for the next two months yep. to the point that I would be wiring wiring up something that's not even that's isolated not live at all and i would think i'd be getting a rush of electricity through my body and i'd drop it and that would happen quite regularly at least two or three times a week for the next two months mm. but in terms of the pds te- oh, so in terms of yeah using exercise as a form to to forget things oh man 100 percent. it's it works a treat oh mate I, I couldn't recommend it more like it's Everyone should be doing awesome. more, yeah, because it's it's gonna do, and like I guess a part of that I want to talk about as well. It's gonna do way better. Like it's gonna do wonders for anything. Way more than any like alcohol, drugs, oh, man, anything it's, like that. It's gonna do way better than anything. And like that. you're fine with alcohol, especially. It's like it's a form of an antidepressant. Yeah. In one way or another, it help you out every now and then. But if you become reliant upon it the next day, <laughs> right? You don't want to do anything. No, you wake up feeling pretty trash. Oh day. yeah, like. That night, don't get me wrong, you're, you know, you're, you're on King top of the world, world you're, you're enjoying yourself, the next day you might have a hangover, but re- forget the fact that you might have a hangover, the, the other side is, is the antidepressant side of what alcohol can do to you, and oh, it puts you in a bad headspace, it, it doesn't, you know, you know, you just feel like you can't achieve anything, life is pointless, what's my purpose, etc, etc, all those thoughts come about through alcohol. If you become reliant, or if you drink when you know you shouldn't be having it, you know. And I understand, and I can relate to that definitely because that's where my head was at for a long time. I'd say easily for the last 
for maybe from about uh, 20, like mid 2017 to mid 2019. So about a solid two years. That's yep. where my head was at. I just, I was drinking way too much. I couldn't get my head. Like I, I was, I was living in my own head, like rent free sort of thing. So yep. I couldn't get out of my own thoughts. Mm. It was really bad. And all I was doing was just continuously drinking and not really taking like initiative to think about anything sort of probably, better. Probably not even living in the moment. How you no. just kind of just like as if you were watching a walkthrough of your, yeah. own, your own life. Yeah, basically. And again, it ties back to like that sort of rough, like three, four month period that I had after I finished school. Yep. And a big sort of thing as well, where I guess PTSD comes into it as well, where I had like, a, I had a confrontation with, uh, my actually had an, yeah, a confrontation with my old brother, um, two days before my 18th birthday. And obviously it had like it, it had, everything in the family had reached boiling point. There yep. was lots of fighting going on. It was, it got to the point where my, like everything, everyone was on the brink of splitting up and it just wasn't a good tone. And my parents were away on an anniversary and I was looking after the house and obviously he's come home, um, mixed a bunch of substances in his system more so than no normal, uh, come home to ask me for money at all early hours in the morning. I've said no, and it's turned into a massive sort of uh, fight. So yep. at, at the end of that, the police got called. Uh, yes. My house was trashed. Thousands of dollars worth of damage had been caused. My dog had run like halfway around, like she'd just run away, I could, like easily a few blocks away. Yep. And yeah, and there was obviously quite a bit of damage done to both of us as well. It was- yeah. And then I just wanted to say like, um... It's honestly really brave and courageous of you to do this, bro. And you've got to be. I'm I'm, I'm proud of you for doing this, man. Because thanks, man. You're the first person to be open and honest. Obviously, getting the approval of, of what you're suggesting, but to be open and honest to this extent, it's you know something to be proud of, dude. And you'd be surprised how many people who are going through similar situations listening in, who are thinking to themselves that they're only they're alone, that no one else is going through anything to you know similar to what they're going through and, and yeah i just think it's yeah it's important for people like obviously talking about this sort of stuff yes. is not comfortable at all yeah and it makes obviously everyone a little bit breathless and anxious but oh, because sense, it all you know things it brings things, everything yeah up. you think about it again mm. and yeah i know exactly what you're talking about mm. if if there were people listening in right now who may have or might still be going through similar situations such like this, what would you give them in terms of a message of how to how to overcome it or how to cope with it coping mechanism? Coping mechanism? Like um something positive. You positive, know? yeah, definitely. I would say try and find something that you're passionate about yep. and bring it to the forefront of your mind yep. and make that your absolute and like only goal it like in your in your sight that's the only thing that you can think about it's the only thing that you want and don't let it like don't let things like that slip and i guess the other thing that i can say is learn to appreciate the little moments in life like the yep. living in the moment and just like the little things like maybe like even just a gorgeous day or like yeah exactly cooking a nice meal for yourself or no exactly and I think even just like after a long hard day at work or even doing whatever it is that you do, just sitting down, relaxing, taking a few deep breaths and just thinking yeah. about like every, like what you. And I know it's, I know it's hard to, to think of it in this perspective, especially yeah, if you're no, going through things like that or you're struggling mentally because of something. But we do take for granted how, how lucky we are to live in such a wonderful country. Absolutely. And, and that's, that's essentially why I go hiking all the time because mm. You can't, you can't hear anything, it's you know, fresh air, and you sit down and just look at the view that you're, you're, you're walking toward, and you're just living in the moment, much like what you're just saying. It's, yeah. it's, I find it so therapeutic. Absolutely, and like it, it takes your mind off everything else too. Yeah. So that's all you can think about is what is currently in front of you in the moment. Yeah. So you were saying you've, you've um, found yourself some mentors that have helped you put yourself in a good headspace now. Yeah. Um, so where are you at right now in terms of um, your mental state? If you don't mind me asking. No, absolutely. Uh, in terms of my mental state, it 
is a lot better than it has been yeah. over the last sort of year, year or two sort yeah. of thing. Coming from a place of, even now, like thinking back, it wasn't that long ago that I was drinking quite heavily yes. and like was, yeah, just obviously just reliving the same things over and over again and just drinking, reliving, drinking, reliving sort of thing and just sort of staying stuck in a rut. Mm. But now everything feels fresh, feels new. I feel oh, good on you, man. different. I like, it's... I don't know, I guess like the main point that I want to get across is like you're going you're like you're always going to have moments throughout your life where mm. you're challenged and you feel shit and like you don't want to come out on the other side of yes. it and all you want to do is tuck yourself away from the world yes. forever. But at the end of the day, like that's it. It's the end of the day. There is a new day. You will be fine like I'm not saying that it's just gonna happen overnight. Yeah. But you will eventually you will be fine. Like Is that is that how you uh, overcome your, uh, the hurdles that you're faced with now and that um, say for example you're having an altercation at work and you may or may not decide to bring it home hmm. do you go by the idea of look today, yesterday uh, today is a bad day tomorrow's a new day let's get on with it is that is that your mentality for these days yeah because yeah. I think back when everything happened I tended to dwell on stuff a little yeah. bit too long and it ate away at me and that can have a negative effect and carry on to everything else. So yes. I think the best way to deal with things is to look at them in the moment. Okay, this is what yep. happened. This is what I have to deal with. That's what I have to like essentially get over. Yep. And then we move on and then we go to the next day. Yeah, man. And you see what's going to happen. Yep. Because it is. It's a brand new day. 100%. Everything will change. Yeah. Now fast forward to the present moment now. Um, you were saying that you use gym as a, as a way of getting rid of the, your mental struggles and it, you find that actually uh, provides healthy endorphins and, and putting you in a good state of mind again. Yeah, absolutely. It's... What what got you into gym? You, you, you obviously, I've mentioned this a couple of times already, you've, you've got your mentors. I don't know if they're in relation to gym or... Uh, yeah, so one of actually, yeah, one of them is actually quite in relation to gym. He's an exercise physiologist. And I grew quite close with him a few years back. And I just, I saw him as a mentor because I saw myself a lot in him. We were very similar in a lot of ways. Yes. And yet he was so smart to like all of these things that I wished that I could do sort of thing he was doing. And then like, I remember speaking to him about it one day and he sort of said, like, why not? Here we go. Like, why, why can't you do these things sort of thing? I was yeah. just like... I couldn't answer it. Like, I didn't know. It's because I'd never... You've, really, you've already put yourself I, down. I, I wrote myself off. So before I even try. Yeah. And yeah. Like, I guess, like, the sort of thing that came into that as well, like, I, uh, as a result, like, right after the, everything, I was playing a lot more sport as well, doing futsal, uh, gym as well, just trying to be involved in as much as I possibly could because I knew that exercise was going to be healthy for my mental state. Um, and obviously picked up a lot of injuries along the way as well. Mm. And over the last sort of year, year and a half, I've become very interested in like the rehab side of things. Yep. And I think that's where my passion lies. Good I like yeah, nice, man. learning about like obviously people's pain, the way pain is perceived, and the way it can be fixed. Yeah. Obviously, like everything is has like a specific fix point. So. Yeah. Is that what you're studying at the moment? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, good man. So. Um, so is that, is that through TAFE or is that university or? So that is a university. So I've gone through pathways to get into university. Yeah. 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 Oh, good on you, man. That's really good. You've found yourself a hobby and everyone's got their own form of hobby, whether it be playing video games, going for a walk, go for a run, have a coffee, gymming for your instance, but it's finding, it's finding your own personal niche or something to rely on when and don't get me wrong, you don't want to become overly reliant on it because sometimes life, you know, you get busy with your life and you might not be able to make that particular hobby. So not essentially become a reliant on it, but something you can do when you, when you, when you can see you're falling back into a, a heap and you want to pick yourself up again. Yeah, definitely. For you to find that is awesome, man. I'm oh, really happy for you, dude. Thanks, man. I appreciate no, it. Thanks, dude. And, in terms of your family life, um, if you would like to share, um, how's that going now for you? 
really good actually from, from uh, where it was till now from where it was yeah very like really nice now every everyone has like everyone has got their own sort of thing going on yeah relationships have been built back up which yep. i think is a really important thing and i think believe it or not covid actually helped with that as well it allowed me to focus more yes on those sorts yeah, of relationships nice. as well and i think that that is a really important part so i am grateful for that sort of thing uh, apart from all the other crap that covid has brought um but yeah everything's going real peachy at the moment uh even I just saw my brother again like the other night and watched a movie and had a meal. And yeah, how, like how's, he, how's he going now? Yeah, quality. He's still got a few things to figure out. But yeah. Way better headspace than what he used nah, to be. Awesome, dude. Is he, um, has he found himself a partner or? Uh, that's a bit of a different story. Uh, some of his issues as well extended from an abusive relationship that he was in and the uh, abuse was yes. directed at him. And he, that's how we, and he, Lash out of yeah. you guys. Okay. Yep. So, yeah. It, it, it's... I could go into details, but the sort of thing it would be like... Yeah, uh, one of a bag. ridiculously long video sort of thing. <laughs> like yeah. It's, but, yeah. But to summarise, but, yeah. Yep. Basically, everything is going real peachy at the moment. I... Yeah. I don't think we've ever had, like, a closer sort of family bond. No, no that's great, least, dude. the last 10 years, anyway. Yeah, and it's funny you say about COVID as bad and as negative as it is and as it's perceived also on the media there is a lot of positive you can get out of it and hmm. it's taught me to take to take a step back and actually slow down a bit yeah definitely um, when i when i broke up with my ex and i was going through a bit of a purple patch at the start of the year i was going out every weekend drinking and it wasn't it wasn't of my nature to be doing that and i i, I could prior to prior to the relationship from um coming to an end, I, I could essentially go six weeks without having a beer or anything yeah. in that, in that, um, in the, um, alcoholic, um, realm. But what I'm trying to say is sometimes you, yeah, don't, don't look for your negative endorphins and, um, trying to keep your mind busy when you're going through a hard time, learn to sit down and just, uh, face the fact that something bad may have happened and, and there's nothing else you can do about it. You've just got to keep moving forward. And it's really difficult to do because I, I still find myself to struggle to sit down for half an hour without wanting to do something, move around. Because yeah. And like your brain immediately is if you're sitting down, it'll just go back to those things that you yeah. shelved in your mind sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Dude. And it's a really hard one to do, but Thankfully for COVID, because we've had so much time and practice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you might even not call it practice, but you are essentially practicing it because of so many restrictions and um, being limited to doing certain things. Being able to take a step back and maybe not essentially be by yourself, but take a step back from certain activities that you, you've been using to, um, using as excuses for hiding things and not thinking about things. Hmm. You sit there and you're, you're, you're engulfed and a lot of negative thoughts or memories that you don't want to bring up but eventually because you've been thinking about them so regularly that eventually one day it will just click and go look i'm happy i can talk about this now it's it's all good you know it's open in the air i can think about it and it's in the past and now it's yeah. time for me to move on and look if it if it's brought up it's brought up but there's nothing else that can be changed about it exactly and when like when that moment hits it's literally like a massive weight off your shoulders like you, yes yeah. it's indescribable yes like, the fact that you're just like wow so that happened yeah and you, you, like you, and then that's sort of it and you're just like oh that's it man um and in terms of um yourself opening up and, and sharing your story do you do you feel like a bit of what i mean obviously a lot of the stuff you're saying it has happened Maybe, maybe, what, 12 months ago? Uh, all the good, like everything good has happened quite recently over the last six to 12 months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so so prior to the six to month, six to 12 month um, change in, in uh, mindset, um, do you feel like having opened up and, and sharing your story today, do you, do you still feel like there's been a bit of weight lift off your shoulder? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. It feels when it's like easy to breathe sort of thing. Yeah. Like there's, yeah. There's, yeah, there's, oh, there's, Oh, I probably it's, exact again, same, exact same. Exact same. Thing. It's, it's when I was, yeah, when I opened up my first video, I'm like, oh, should I? Shouldn't I? Yeah. And but I think the most, the more honest you are about 
talking about a particular situation or scenario, um, the more you actually get out yourself. Yeah, definitely. And it's about being honest with, like with yourself as well about who you are. And, yeah. Like, just yeah, where you want to be. Yeah. Because like I didn't want to be unhappy anymore. I was just like, screw that. Yeah, that's it, it, man. It's just a waste of my time and energy. That's it, dude. But if if there was, I guess, a lasting message you could you could leave people listening in today. Um, that may be going through a specific situation such like ones that you've been faced with in the past or they're in a, in a bit of a slump and they're struggling to, to, to get the motivation to pick themselves up again and, and, and get, get on with life or, or what would you do? What would you say? Hmm. Um, I guess it's kind of hard to give advice to other people who might be in a similar sort of situation because I'm in no way an expert on any of this sort of stuff, but... From your own personal... Because obviously everyone goes through different scenarios. Yeah, so, definitely. But I, and I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Because, I mean, if I, if I were to say, describe mental health. It, mental health is such a broad topic that I think even the reason why I think personally schools don't talk about it is because it's so broad. It, there's, you can't really focus specifically. No, exactly, man. I, I could be offended by someone saying, shut up to me, whereas someone... Yeah. Someone to the left of me would would see that as a regular thing and just would shrug it off. It's it's such a broad topic. Hmm. But, but from your perspective, how would you um, word it? I guess just don't be afraid to get yourself out there. Like yeah. just Yeah, get yourself out amongst the world, get yourself some sunshine, uh, see the beauty and everything around you, I guess. And yeah. I guess appreciate how like how lucky we are and like everything that we have like yeah i know some countries go outside and like you can walk outside and there wouldn't be a glorious blue sky with the sun shining down and all that sort yeah, of thing and that's like, it dude I, I think it's just that and combining it with something that you're passionate about and you're golden and like just yeah don't be afraid to chat about this sort of thing to someone because you might find that you're going to get something out of it and be, you might be helped for it yeah so like you like you got nothing to lose essentially in that sense exactly but, exactly right man and in terms of the the whole don't judge a book by its cover hmm. um, thing um like obviously at school i could see that you were probably perceived as that as a because of because yeah. of being down and, and yeah people, and like, people okay. would say stuff to you which personally they they would just say and they wouldn't even know why you were down but I, I feel like and it's really harsh for me to say but I feel like people target the easy ones and, and I I'm, and I'm, I'm so sorry you had to go through that and if if there were people like like let's just say for instance there were kids at school that may be listening in or parents might be listening in and their son or daughter was going through a hard time and and Oh, maybe even the bully, a bully was listening in right now. Maybe could you just quickly describe the effect that it has on someone by just by judging someone on, on how they're feeling, as opposed to the the um, the roots and why they're actually going through this and showing themselves um, in such a way. Yeah, just obviously before like you do anything backhanded or absolutely like just downright mean like make sure that someone is well obviously don't do anything mean in the first place but yes. uh just you know perspective is important don't mm. like someone is already having a hard time if you can see that someone is already like down in the dumps or feeling shit or low on themselves like yeah don't it's basically just coming up and kicking them while they're down sort of thing while exactly, they're already man. probably in the process of trying to pick themselves up and you were just coming in and giving them a straight old knee to the head sort of thing. You know, I think in terms of, in terms of school... That's what it feels like. Yes. Yeah. And in terms of school, and I wish kids would have a better understanding, hmm. I think it's a lack of knowledge as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think, like I said, I think perspective is the most important thing. Like, just, just put yourself in their shoes. Like, try and think about what yeah. they might be going through or what they might be experiencing. And, like, yeah. you might have a whole new, like, maybe not respect, but, like... A new outlook on this person and like exactly the way, right, that, the way that they think the way that they do things like you never really considered it yes yeah and, and yeah i can i i totally saw that back in the day in school hmm. uh, but if there was 
anything you may have, may also want to mention today on the video it doesn't have to be on on, on top like on the topic essentially if it's something that's sitting in the back of your mind you're like oh man i wish i could get this out and, and tell people about it or share it hmm. you know the stage is yours bro i don't think there's really anything extra i would just say that obviously alcohol and everything and substance abuse kind of like comes back all into this category massively yeah and i won't deny that doing all of that sort of stuff has is fun and like can have its benefits in the moment like it makes you feel better to sure oh yeah it'll make, you feel, it'll make you feel better for in the moment it's good 12, but 12 it's hours. the uh, lasting effect yeah right? and it's essentially like putting a band-aid on a bullet wound yep. you're gonna you like you're done yeah. it's not gonna help that's at it all. so yep i think yeah other than that there's not really anything else that i think is important that other people should know yeah i think yeah the main message is just that the bad things that you're experiencing aren't the be all and end all like you'll come out on the other side and you'll be stronger and a better person for it in the end yes so keep trudging along and i guess with that as winston churchill once said like i mean like if you're going through hell keep going you're bound to come out on the other side eventually i like that man i like that and i think having a bit of bit of personal knowledge of being going have having gone through certain things as well as negative as it is mm. um, you're a lot more better and inclined to to say this sort of stuff because you you know what that that quite means you know yeah yes. uh, i wouldn't really compare myself to like the guys going through war but no but, uh, yeah yeah but I know, I know what everyone saying. goes through their own track. everyone goes through their own type of war you know what i mean yeah. and yeah. having that that your own personal knowledge, having gone through traumatic things in the past, um, you know, going to the present time, it, it, it allows you to be able to say this sort of stuff and go, yeah, like I know exactly what, what he means yeah. in this say, and, and, and by that I can help others if they're going through and facing certain situations, such like that. Yeah, definitely. I think that's yeah. really important too. Yeah. But no, thanks, man. I really appreciate it today, dude. And Anytime, man. I mean, I'm, I'm no podcast expert but you're getting there man. you're getting there man <laughs> yeah. i was really intrigued when i first like saw you put this on i was like this is actually really cool this is something that people should get around yeah thanks dude it's, it's one of those things where both myself myself and co-host mike we just want to get the message out where we're no professionals everything we say is not based on any facts or articles it's just coming from personal knowledge and and then having people come on the share the show and share their own personal knowledge Hopefully, um, you know, people listening in will grow and, and learn things along the way. And I've, I've certainly learned a lot as well about others and myself. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, thanks, dude. I really appreciate you being here today, man, and, and giving up a Anytime. bit of time any day. Yeah, absolutely. But My this, pleasure. Yeah, thanks, dude. And this has been uh, episode seven of Catching the Mind, Clearing the Mind, One Couch Talk at a Time. And the topic that I went over with Sam Chapman today was don't judge a book by its cover. Um, Hopefully you guys enjoy the video. If you want to message me for anything that you know, needs be, if you're struggling, please feel free to do so and reach out to reach out to us in any way, shape, or form, um, because we don't want anyone going through a hard time. And um, if you know anyone that's going through a hard time, please, please um, mention the video to them because hopefully they might get something out of them, themselves. So have a fantastic rest of the night, guys, and um, we'll hope to see you guys soon. Catch you later.